and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Lux Aurelian Soul. Um, I guess I have it labeled Aurelian Soul Lux. Um, so this is going to be pretty awesome. So we're going to be playing, <clears throat> you know, a Targon Aurelian Soul deck with our top end, but we're going to be combining it with Demacia for good interaction. <clears throat> oh man, I'm getting choked up about this one. <laughs> For some good interaction and of course uh lux in here as well with all the invoke cards we can get a lot of mana of spells with the invoke cards to be able to help out with lux a lot of lux decks i've played in the past have been ones that have kind of relied on going turn three remembrance a lot where we mulligan hard for turn three remembrance <clears throat> but this one we're not going to have to do that as much we got five one drops they're all pretty good we have a great two drop with solari shield bear you know we're and then you know we continue on we got threes grizzled rangers are really good four mana card so you know like we don't have to just um you know play turn three remembrance all the time we're going to be able to be doing other things but i think this deck's going to have a whole lot of power um hush has been turning into just a really really good card um it's a card that that uh i haven't been playing enough of it's going to be my first time really playing Star Shaping. We'll see how this card does. Uh, there are a lot of Bilgewater and, and Noxus decks that have a lot of Nexus damage, and that Heal 5 can help keep you alive, and so it'll be um, a good card to try out here. And of course, the Star Shaping is very good with Lux with that 5 mana. Hey, Ryu. Um, so yeah, let's let's give this a try. We're going to go play five games over in ranked like we always do. Um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we're playing. Um, yeah, no no Radiant Guardian in here right now. But yeah, that, that could definitely be a card that we need in here. Um, maybe instead of, what, Guiding Touch? The <clears throat> two mana, heal your ally or Nexus 2, draw one. It's possible the Radiant Guardian could work out better there, especially against the the matchups that Radiant Guardian's good against. Um, are again like those those like Demacia or sorry those Bilgewater and Noxus decks. They they're dealing damage, and so having the tough is really key in those matchups. So I like Solari Soldier on one. I like Priestess on three. I'm not sure if I want another Solari Soldier on two. Well, actually, no. We we'll probably just keep them both. Yeah, we just keep them both. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. And we do play the first one on turn one in case we would have drawn another one drop. So that we could have had three one drops here. I couldn't wait until turn two and then like play them and then they're both uh, three threes or anything like that. Come hither, you beasts of glory. Um, that card's scary. I just want to take this out, especially with already having the mobilize. As That's pretty scary. All right, down to 11 with our now aggro deck. It's like Priestess is better to play here, but the problem with playing Priestess is... Sunlight guiding, my brethren. Um... Like, if we go Shield Bearer, then Shield Bearer plus one of these other things could, you know, with Concerted Strike, take out a Screeching Dragon. My faith protects me. Let's go for the Concerted Strike while these things are smaller. Okay. 
until they grow too much. Cool. So we can have Fallen Comet take out the other one. I don't know, this is, you know, we have another Priestess that can get us another 4, 5, or 6, but while we're taking out Screeching Dragon, they, they definitely can have some other dragons that are, can be even scarier. Or they just have every single Screeching Dragon possible. That's not great. So Priestess allows me to play uh, Remembrance with 5 mana. If I have my 3-2 if I have my three two block the 5-5, five five, you know, it turns into a 6-3. So then these don't trade with it anymore. The game of Screeching Dragon. Did every single one of their Screeching Dragons cost four also? Like, did they just have all of those in their opener? I think so. So I'm, I'm kind of expecting them to play the 8-8, eight, eight, the infinite mind splitter. Well, they're not going to have that card anymore. Infinite mind splitter, that is. And of course my my plan is to have to play have Moon Silver play Aurelian Soul this next turn. This could be pretty important. Oh, we have to behold a celestial card for that. Uh, I don't behold a celestial card. At least not right now. Why do you have to attack? Just sit back. Don't don't attack. Oh yeah, we're gonna behold a celestial card by this thing. The guilty would bend. No mercy for heretics. I don't know exactly what I'm worried about as far as having a really soul block.
and Concerted Strike is great. Yeah, that's just gotta happen. So I don't invoke right now with the Priestess, but I still kind of want to play it. That worked out. That worked out. So maybe we'll have Priestess plus Lux. We'll see. Nope. The heavens diminish without my. Dealing with that Aurelian soul. Sunlight guiding, my brethren. Maybe with the warrior, if it attacks, we can block with like the seven three. Right, this thing's a 7-7. Seven, seven. <sighs> okay. So their Celestials cost zero right now. I can go... How is it the opponent's action? Really? How is it the opponent's action? What is going on? Well, I mean, obviously we're decks now. Or no, they don't have the attack token, I do. Is a timer, but I mean, I I was I was playing, you know, I was playing stuff as fast as I could. How'd the timer go away whenever I was playing stuff? Uh, it looks like they would have the answer with the single combat anyway. All right, well, I wasn't winning that anyway, but that's that's frustrating. Timer just ran out while I was playing stuff. Too many dragons. Too many dragons.
I'm not. I'm honestly not sure against like a really aggressive deck like this if we're supposed to be keeping Behold the Infinite. Like I'm, I'm keeping it here. It costs two mana, but I'm honestly not sure if because you know like this is basically just a two mana you know draw a card kind of thing. Like it doesn't it doesn't affect the board, so it's it's not something that you want early because you don't want it. Like you can't really afford to have two mana wasted of not affecting the board against a real aggressive deck like this. But I still kept it because even though that's the case, the cards that you get with Behold the Infinite usually are cards that are pretty under-costed. So it's not like we're, it's not just draw a card, it's draw a very good under-costed card. I'm going to hold on to it here. Death doesn't scare me. And just just hold on to the spell mana, especially with having like remembrance. There's plenty of killing left. Okay. Best case scenario here is they like. You know, attack with a 3-3, three, three, I block with a 3-2. And our Remembrance costs 5, and we hit Radiant Guardian. That's like best case scenario. <laughs> this heal from Star Shaping is probably going to be pretty important in a while. Lux is a good one. Definitely like seeing that. We're probably just going to be playing Lux on curve, especially with having the barrier that can uh, prevent damage. We don't have to be too scared of playing Lux out there. There's no like vengeance or anything like that. I'll try anyone you want. The objectives. Okay, I'm gonna be playing this Grizzled Ranger. This is just too much attacking. So we take five and go down to eleven. No. Not done yet. Pass priority. So we don't get to play Remembrance. Let's go, I mean, well, we could, but we just don't get Radiant Guardian. Let's go the Behold the Infinite. Um, if we behold a Celestial card. I wish we did. I wish we did. I guess I'm going to go Falling Comet. Could be a good answer for Gangplank. Does give me, you know, six mana is, of course, also perfect with Lux. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this. With plan of, like, Lux and Falling Comet and stuff like that. <laughs> Could have double hush to take out both of those things. I, go, I prefer that after Lux is in play, though. Um, the star shaping 
does mean I don't have to be quite as worried about my life total. Where, like, if we really couldn't afford to take four, maybe we just pass priority with the hushes. Definitely still real scary, you know, all the noxion fervors and that kind of stuff that they could have. Probably have to play Star Shaping, but Star Shaping doesn't level up Lux. So that's awkward. Just a little awkward with five mana and Lux. And of course, seven total mana with three and five. Look what you did. Could play two blockers with these things, but that's not worth it. Hmm. Why do you cost five? I need something that costs four. I'm not planning on playing first blade. I'm planning on saving this mana for hush and star shaping and stuff like that. It's just, I don't know, star shaping this turn. Didn't really like it. Cool. Not double noxion fervor. Single combat pair is better with star shaping as well. Doing a good job leveling up Lux, but lifesteal unit, elusive unit. I love the taste of the action. Especially lifesteal with single combat. Witness divinity. Alright, we'll make all the obvious blocks. And the onus is on them to really do something here because if they just let damage happen, we're going up to eight. And I'll be very happy with that. So we have a hush and a single combat. As far as protection. Ooh, I am very happy with this. It is going to level up Gangplank with me taking two damage from Urchin. If that matters. Not sure it does. Let's go 
this single combat to gain four life. They're left with just one card. And if we can't figure out how to win against just one card, that'll be kind of sad whenever we have the Star Shaping Invoke and the Solar Priestess Invoke. Okay, well... Never mind, that's going to be worse for me. Alright, down to three. Probably gotta be playing this card. 12 total mana. Maybe I should have taken the Written in Stars. I become who I was always meant to be. Destroyer should just end the game pretty quickly for us. That's a problem. All right, so I got 10 mana. Silence both of these. We consider but just take one damage. And then the gangplank goes to three health. That'll make it easier to um you know, kill the gangplank with like a concerted strike or something like that. Might as well play the shield bearer, like a three-two and a three-three. There's really not much difference in those two. But we'll save the extra mana. So nine-seven overwhelm doesn't quite kill them. answer of why people are playing tons of Gangplank and Expansion. I, I don't know. I, my guess is that that's just a um, kind of an anomaly of what you've been paired against. Um, that you've been just getting paired against a lot of uh, Gangplank. And... That's a pretty poor block by them. That needed to, That should have been Jagged Butcher blocking and not Gangplank. I could have just had Jagged Butcher block like the Shield Bear and gone to one and kept Gangplank around. Or or just the the Jagged Butcher block the Destroyer and have these both at one health, but then have Gangplank around with the Overwhelm and the Powder Keg and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Seems like a pretty good option. Cosmic Rays. Alright, GG's. That one ended up being pretty close. That was a clutch star shaping. For sure, getting that extra five life, that was definitely necessary. And we're now two and one. Check that, one and one. And we're now one and one. <laughs> yeah, dude, monkeys are good. The powder monkeys, those are good. Definitely like having this one drop. Yeah, Gangplank's strong card, definitely. Yep, yeah, you got Jack the Winner. Um, Raise your weapon, Sunwood. Bilgewater, pretty good. Punish transgressions. You poor thing. Basically, I want to trade before they have something that kills my T2. That's definitely a good sign for us to know two drop. So they don't just open attack. But that's a bad sign. Petty officer, because that card is amazing. You will not prevail. Certainly considering blocking the Petty Officer and then single combat fighting, because then that would still keep their Sejuani and Gangplank at zero. But I like this, of like, you know, we have two things that go with the Petty Officer. If they go with, um, Mega Rain. I was going to say if they go with the, uh, I was kind of expecting Parlay. And so I was going to say if they parlay my Grizzled Ranger, <clears throat> we would be able to do that. Uh, there's the parlay. Look at that, my two drop holding back Gangplank. That's pretty big. That's pretty big. The sun is shining. We should too. Probably should have just attacked there instead of playing Lux. Aren't any gods here? Just me. Three. You wanted rough. Carved from the savage cold. I think killing Sejuani is better than killing Gangplank, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I was going to say, I was like, what? Is Lux not leveling up? I'm hoping this Guiding Touch protects Lux, which I guess I could have just gone Hush first for the Sunburst to keep the Vulnerable away from the Lux. That's pretty...
pretty great. Now we can also have star shaping, be able to heal Lux. Hey, Super Z. Hope it's going well. All right, so I'm at 10 mana right now. So if we play the Solari Priestess, then we're looking at playing one of these cards, like Star Shaping or Sunburst or Four Demacia. Just one of those cards, and I think that's okay. Take this Golden Sister with the Lifesteal again. Choo Choo with the donation deck. Let's kill this thing. Final spark to kill Jack. Alright. They're left with just one card in hand. I'm at nine. I have star shaping. I have golden sister. They did get rid of Lux, but Lux did a ton, and so we should be good. Alright, new donation deck from Choo Choo. What do we got? Fizz, Diana, Elusives. Okay. Fizz isn't quite the focus, but it's not tons of spells. Water is mine and mine alone. Sure is. Sure is. Yours and yours for them. Um, I want to just let's do this. Let's make this shield bearer six five. All right, this is me going down to four. If I hush the Gangplank, um, then they won't have the Overwhelm. I'll be taking two here, so three. So that saves me three life. If I hush the Powder Keg, that saves me one life from the explosion and one life from here, so it saves me two life. So I think we go hush this thing to save three life. Stay at seven. Coward. Did you with boys? Is Diana? Thank you, Chuchu. So that was the card that the Oral Grifter nabbed from us. Have I had this Behold the Infinite in my hand since the opening hand? Oh man, that got written in stars. So they have Sed so they have Sejuani in hand right now. So we know they have Sejuani. Um. So yeah, we'll be good. I was forged by winter. Pain is nothing. It's an eight nine. Hmm. 
Well, that's just the wrong attack. <clears throat> Should definitely be the other way around. Oh, they've already dealt damage to me. Oh, we're alright. No, no, yeah, we hushed this thing. Right, right, hushed it. Right, right, right. Um. I mean, I'm just gonna be trying to kill this thing right now. Cool. So I feel like the. Like, Sejuani is the way we're going to lose this game. Right, like, if they have something... Like, this destroyer is going to kill them. Like, without Sejuani, like, we're not, we're not losing this game. Going with the overwhelm. Who's ready for the show? Get to stay alive. Don't you dare run. But of course they're left with nothing. We've already gone through basically all their stuff. We've gone through three gangplanks, two Sejuanis, two Jack the Ripper. They don't really have stuff left. All right, GG's. That was a good win. Victory today, freedom. Tomorrow. Star shaping's been important. Gaining five life has definitely been important. I think I like this. I like this Demacia with Targon at pairing. With Demacia having single combat. Ugh, that card's just amazing. A single combat concerted strike. Hush is just being um <laughs> Hush is just being incredible. It is being so good. Yeah, I just I didn't play Aurelian Soul. I know, I know we're really in Soul deck, but I didn't play Aurelian Soul because we um because they had the 2-1. They had the 2-1, the monkey, that could just go right in front of Aurelian Soul. Stop ramping. No. All right, gonna try to use written in stars to reduce the cost of Aurelian Soul. All right, let's mess some folks up. The trolls are going to war. can't really just attack with Grizzled Ranger, they block with the uh, Trundle, then I attack again, then they don't do anything, and I just dealt 3 damage to kill. Man, these weirding stones. This is not good. Not good.
A quite a good ramp hand. You know, turn two ramp, turn three ramp, turn four trundle, turn five ramp plus another blocker and invoke. Quite a good hand. So now turn six, they got eight mana. Ugh. So killing Trundle before Trundle levels up to Ice Pillar. Hopefully going to draw another really Soul with this Rune and Stars. Hopefully. Twisted Fate. Round 7, they just have 10 mana. That's pretty great. the way to the stars believe or burn Nine mana. So I can single combat the Aurelian Soul and then Falling Comet it. Oh, I still just have a million cards. Hmm. I guess that's my best idea. Don't really have a better one. Shield is pretty nice. Um, cosmic Inspiration is pretty unbeatable. So this game is over. Um, we can continue to play if we want, um, but this game's over. Okay, well now the game's really over. Been super, super impressed with Cosmic Inspiration. That's a card that I was glancing over quite a bit um, whenever I was first doing Invoke stuff. Um, but yeah, over the last three, four days or so, definitely taking that card a lot more. That card is very good. What we got going on here? 
I'm not sure. Like, maybe I shouldn't be playing the, the Spacey Sketcher. Maybe that's not worth it. I'm thinking right now of, like, not, not Spacey Sketcher on one. But I guess playing it on, like, turn four. And discarding the four Demacia that we create. I've whipped up something special. Clad in shining sunlight. That's what I'm thinking of. Discard for Demacia. We are a Lux deck. The Four Demacia was actually really good for us earlier against King Plank Sedwani. Um, so I have one. If I play Solari Priestess, I'll have one single combat available. We don't really need to. I'm going to wait to see what they do first. this mana. I should have played the Sketcher. Well, no, because we want to play Priestess first with Daybreak. So we could play Remembrance this turn, but the thing about playing Remembrance this turn is then we don't have it for Lux. Now, with them doing no attacks at all, it definitely signifies a Twisted Fate. So I think they're going to have Twisted Fate kill these. That'd be my guess. Deal me in. Who says I don't shoot? So that's three things dead. We can pay. We can play a pretty cheap Remembrance and hopefully Radiant Guardian. That'd be the best case scenario. That is the easiest thing to kill by damage with only four health. That's unfortunate. It's probably the worst one to hit. Gotta go with the flow. Lux or Golden Sister? The light of my star. Or Golden Sister. It means they don't get free damage in with the spray fin. They gotta use cards they want to. And if they're using cards and dealing with my lifesteal and my elusive and that kind of stuff. We still have the Swiftling Glancer over here too. So like if they if they're using cards and getting removal and all this stuff, then it, then they're probably not gonna have cards left for Lux, which would be good news.
here. You got legs. Use them. It's already five out of eight. And yeah, it went up fast. Oh, right. They just played Sprayfin and the other thing, so they just drew a few cards. So come. Thing about of thing about killing Twisted Fate is it does give them the opportunity to play another Twisted Fate, and that's not really the thing that I want to happen right now. Cast one, make it rain so far. It's definitely hoping for a more expensive spell that we could use to help level up Lux. Um, that's what I was hoping for. So this thing's gonna die, and that's gonna die. Let's have this fight here, and this fight here. Let's just take out those things. So we're at four out of six now for Lux. Your card. Shame on you. No, double Solari soldier. I just want to draw anything that levels up this Lux. Last two draws. Solari Soldier, Solari Soldier. Literally the worst card in the deck. And I know I'm not trading that for much, but considering their deck of like their ability to just kill one health thing super easily, um, I just want to gain, I'm just going to trade in that and gain the four life. Um, just taking that trade. All right, they're gonna pass over to me. I'll pass back instead of me like playing something and then they play Leviathan or something like that. Nope, can't have her easy plunder enabled. So just gotta make the block. I think Living Legends would be... Yeah, I think that would be enough mana to level up Lux. I have to check, but I think so. Okay, well... Fortunately, Lux is dead, though. I think they're just taking 10. If they don't have a unit to block, I think they just take 10. Taking 10. my hand. 
found the answer to the Leviathan Swain combo. You just have a one sided deal 15 damage. Are we actually going to be Twisted Fate Swain? Talked about earlier, I'm like 0 and 100 against this deck. Are we actually going to beat them? Are we actually going to win? Shield is gone. We got that sweet animation. Now both Leviathan and Swain are gone. Keep up, keep up. We're at 16 still. Not getting plunder turned on. How many times do I have to tell you? Now they see who I truly am. Fourteen power. Can't. Okay. Well, to say can't level up early in soul, but don't. Doesn't matter now. The guillotine. For conquest! For empire! Dark in the sky! Raise your weapon, Sunwood! <clears throat> so we'll have the supernova be able to take down Leviathan and Swain. Assuming they're going to play Swain. Got to keep him obliterated. Celestials are pretty silly. Merely pawns in a greater game. So that's that's twice that we've used one card to get rid of both Leviathan and Swain. Look within. Sure, I'll trade. We still have our living legends. Um, so they played Riptide Rex, two Leviathans. Running out of super awesome stuff. Never lost a fair game. Eyes open. Let's go with the Living Legends. Finish this game out. Okay, let's see. Huh, I can only play one, basically play one of these things. Either the Great Beyond or the Destroyer, either one of them should close this game out. Um, I don't know if there's really any difference between them. We played the Destroyer earlier, let's play the Great Beyond. I, mean, I guess the difference between them is that the, the Destroyer costs two less mana, so I could play other stuff also, but... Could have played like the messenger. I guess so. That's a mistake. I should play the messenger. Messenger's cool. Get a nice little pup. No matter way, no matter which way we go, we have that. 
Oh, they discarded a Leviathan earlier, so they were out of Leviathan. So, yes, they were really struggling. All right, GG. So, Lux, Aurelian, Soul, and Nice 3 and 2. I think, you know, I've, I really like playing, like, these Aurelian Soul Invoke decks, but I do think we need another region that it's not just, that the best isn't just 40 Targon cards, which is what I've mostly been playing before, because I've been trying out the new cards. Um, Hush and Star Shaping were both very good for us. Those are two cards that I need to play more of in my all Targon decks. Um, but, you know, uh, Demacia was pretty good, you know, having just... Some cheaper stuff, single combat, awesome. Um, yeah, I was happy with Demacia and with Lux. Very powerful card with Remembrance. Yeah, I liked those. I could definitely see playing Radiant Guardian in this kind of deck. This this did feel like this would be a good Radiant Guardian deck. Grizzled Ranger was just fine, but good chance the Radiant Guardian would be better. Because really we're going to struggle with like you know the decks going underneath us, not really decks going over us too much. Because... The only thing that really is going to be going over Aurelian Soul is other Aurelian Soul decks, as we saw. We played against the the ramp version of Aurelian Soul with Trundle, and they had four ramp cards, and they were able to get Aurelian Soul out on turn seven, and uh, then also have like Spell Shield to protect it. Um, even after I got rid of their Spell Shield, they had another uh, Bastion protecting it. So the you know, like that that kind of stuff that's gonna that's gonna be tough. But um, really, I think we need to focus on making sure that the early game decks don't defeat us. Spacey Sketcher, I mean, we did a great job of drawing Solari Soldier, so maybe that means that, you know, maybe that's, um, you know, but like Spacey Sketcher wasn't really that great. Guiding Touch was was pretty good, healing the healing two. We did a great job of having a bunch of Solari Soldiers all the time, and that does make our life easier. But somewhere in here, whether it's Spacey Sketcher, where, whether it's Guiding Touch, or whether it's Grizzled Ranger, I, I think there'd be nice to play like two Radiant Guardians in here somewhere out of those cards. All right, but that's it here for Lux, Aurelian Soul. Uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, you know, leave those comments. Let me know what you, what you thought of the deck and, and, you know, those observations that we were making there. Um, whatever you're playing that you're having a lot of fun with, feel free to let me know or whatever you want to see on the channel. Always like uh, getting that feedback from y'all on YouTube. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Aurelian Soul Lux, and I will see you for the next video.